In this video, we'll be looking at the features of the new Laerdal SimMan 3G+. This high fidelity simulator really takes testing and training to the next level. We here in the Axis system wish to set you up for success and make the SimLab experience more realistic and impactful. Hello friends and EMS professionals, Steven Sione here, Trading Captain for Ada County Paramedics. Whether you are preparing for phase four testing with the medical director or going through practical testing as a potential new hire, we would like to introduce you to your future patient in SimLab. So let's review some of the cool new features starting with the general impression before moving to the airway, breathing, circulation, and some additional treatments. As you approach the patient, you may notice that the eyes are blinking normally, frequently, or infrequently. The pupils might respond to light or be unequal or perhaps pinpoint. Perhaps the eyes close halfway or all the way shut to match the intended responsiveness of the scenario. The simulator will breathe spontaneously at the selected rate and you could possibly see blue lights inside the mouth to represent cyanosis. The chest will rise and fall to match the respiratory rate. Lung sounds can be heard in the normal locations with the stethoscope through speakers located on the chest, mid-axillary, or back. We can also use an auscultation focus to eliminate the mechanical sounds of the simulator to better allow you, the provider, to hear the nuances of wheezes, rails, or ronchi, for example. This will temporarily cease rise and fall of the chest, so don't be alarmed. Also, don't be fooled by the little ultrasound symbols on the chest as they do not indicate where lung sounds can be ideally heard. The airway can be properly managed by any number of BLS or ALS procedures to include head tilt chin lift or other positioning. OPAs, MPAs, supraglottic airways, nasal or endotracheal intubation are all accepted. If properly treated, the simulator will respond with chest rise and fall and sensors that tell the proctor that the simulator is being properly ventilated. As a testing tip, this new SimMan 3G Plus can demonstrate trismus or airway edema, which might likely guide your treatment. It can demonstrate the one-sided absent lung sounds and asymmetric chest rise of attention pneumo, which might require needle decompression in the midclavicular or mid-axillary regions. Maybe even a can't ventilate, can't intubate situation, which might guide you towards a surgical cricothyrotomy. As for circulation, bilateral pulses at the carotid, radial, and brachial, plus pedal sites can also be felt with slight pressure and a slow release. These pulses may disappear with decreased blood pressure and obviously disappear in cardiac arrest. The femoral pulses will remain present if the patient's heart is beating. Those are not pressure activated. Oftentimes, this makes the femoral pulses easiest to assess. Vital signs such as heart rate, blood pressure, pulse oximeter, and even the four-late EKG will show up on a wall screen as well as on our Zoll X-Series cardiac monitor. As a word of caution, if the wall screen blood pressure differs from the Zoll cardiac monitor, it's most likely because someone did not press the NIPB button again on the Zoll or set the Zoll up to take serial vital signs. For any discrepancy, please refer to the wall screen for the most recent set of vital signs. Rhythm identification and electrical therapy. There are four lead cable posts on the torso. If a 12 lead is requested, it'll show up on the wall screen, but not on the Zoll X-Series cardiac monitor. There are no cable posts for the 12 leads and we will not be using electrodes. 12 lead application will be simulated. We will however use real combo pads for any electrical therapy 
to include transcutaneous pacing, synchronized cardioversion, and defibrillation. If done properly, pacing will show capture both electrically and manually. The combo pads must be placed on the gold disc to function properly. IVs and medications. This simulator takes 20 gauge IVs at the bilateral ACs using an extension set or saline lock and coban to secure. Please do not use transport or other types of tape. Please do not push any type of medications or IV fluids through the simulator, as this step will be verbalized and noted by the proctor when given. IM injections are okay at the bilateral deltoids and IOs at both humeral heads as well as the left tibial tuberosity. This mannequin is wireless and can be moved to whatever position you feel is necessary. This mannequin's body and extremities articulate more than any of its predecessors, allowing for easier assessments and more realism. Please use care and caution as you would with a real person. With this degree of high fidelity, most things are as you find them. Whether in training or testing, for example, if you ask, what's the patient's breathing rate? Or what are the patient's pupils like? The response from the proctor will likely be, as you find them, leading you to further assess your patient. So let's talk equipment. We use the Zoll X-Series Cardiac Monitor. If you're not familiar, please take time to become familiar and or watch a video on its basic functions. EMTs and advanced EMTs will not be expected to interpret EKGs or use the ALS functions that would be outside their scope of practice. In addition to the monitor, we will have two blue equipment bags. The royal blue bag will have a mixture of BLS and ALS equipment, while the navy blue bag is predominantly ALS equipment. Please ask your partner to help if you cannot locate a specific piece of equipment. If you're looking for a piece of equipment we don't carry, please verbalize how you would use it. If you are in SimLab, on behalf of your fire department, please request training equipment from your respective training captain or coordinator if needed. Simulation techniques and limitations. Here are some training techniques that will help you better understand the simulation process. First, treat the scenario like a real call. Talk to the patient as you would in real life. Interact with any bystanders, real or imaginary, by asking a comprehensive set of questions to help you develop an accurate history of the event. Don't forget to conduct a physical exam as necessary. A good assessment trumps any individual provider skills. We want to know if you can determine a working diagnosis from your assessment and whether or not you can run a call from start to finish. Secondly, assume everything happens in real time unless told otherwise. For example, if you give a medication with a three minute onset, don't expect an immediate response. And thirdly, be courteous to your partners and delegate those tasks accordingly. EMS is a team sport and you cannot do it all efficiently by yourself. Additionally, there are some limitations of simulation. Although the lifelike features have come a long way and this new SimMan 3G Plus can actually perspire, this simulator cannot change skin color to reflect pale, ashen, or flushed. The simulator cannot use a combination of accessory muscles when struggling to breathe or display the classic look and facial expressions of fear and distress. These things must be evaluated by asking. Ask the proctor questions to answers that the simulator cannot provide. This will help you navigate the scenario and help put you on the right path. If you are visually or physically assessing the mannequin, verbally state those findings. This shows the evaluators how thorough you are. Remember, we cannot read your mind and nothing is assumed. And lastly, please try to enjoy the process. We're not trying to jam you up, but more like trying to make you better. Testing is confidential, and what happens in the sim lab is only discussed with the evaluators and training staff. Remember to relax and be yourself, as communication and compassion 
are important aspects of the job. And with that, I look forward to training with you. This has been another edition of an Access Just-in-Time training. Thanks for watching. Stay sharp and stay safe.